variables. As you learned in the previous section, before you can start making 3D games using the 3GS library, you'll need to understand how to write JavaScript code. All web pages that include client-side scripting, that scripting that happens inside the user's browser, use JavaScript. In this section, I hope to get you up to speed with writing JavaScript code. Writing code, especially games, is great fun and the more you practice, the better you'll get. I wrote my first computer program using a punch card device back in 1969 and I'm still learning new stuff every day. The basic building block of all programming languages is the variable. Don't just watch me waffle on. Open your Chrome browser. I recommend Chrome for this course. Then press Command Shift J if you're on a Windows PC or Command Option J on a Mac. Presumably J for JavaScript. If you forget the keyboard shortcut, you can also press the triple dot button at the top right and then select More Tools, Developer Tools. You'll get a new window open. This defaults to the Console tab, which is exactly what we want. Enter let x equals 3. Then press enter. Ignore the undefined, that just means there's no value returned by this code. But you've created a little part of your computer's memory that you can access using the name x. Enter x. Now it shows the number 3. That's because the variable x has the value 3. Sometimes it's confusing about variable names and variable values. If it helps, think of a pigeonhole system. Each pigeonhole has a name and inside each pigeonhole a number is stored. If we look in the pigeonhole named x, the number 3 is stored there. Let's store a new value at the pigeonhole y. Enter let y equals 5. Again we get undefined. Why is that? Yes, assigning a variable does not return a value. What happens if we enter x plus y? you get 8, because adding together x and y does return a value. It is 3 plus 5, which is 8. What's y minus x? Yes, it's 2, because 5, y's value, minus 3, x's value, is 2. Enter let result equal x plus y. See that variable names don't have to be a single letter. A variable name can contain letters, digits, underscores and dollar signs. To see the value of result, just enter result. It has the value 8, 3, x's value, plus 5, y's value. We now have a new variable, result. A variable is called a variable because it can vary. Enter x equals 12. Now the value in the x pigeonhole is 12, not 3. Has this changed the value of result? Click the little i icon and we'll add a live expression. Enter result. Now we can constantly see what the value result is. And it's still 8. Because once the value is set, it will stay that way until it's updated. Even though it was set as x plus y, it isn't actually tracking those variables. To update it, we need to enter result equal x plus y once again. Now we get the value 17. x equals 12 plus y equals 5. There's another way to declare a variable. Actually, there are two other ways. Let's take them in order. Enter const z equals 7. By using const and not let, we create a variable that cannot be changed. The pigeonhole has a locked glass door. We can see the value, but we can't change it. Try entering z equals 8 you get an error message, assignment to constant variable. Constants can make your code more robust, ensuring values that shouldn't change can't be changed. I mentioned there's another way to declare a variable, and that is to use var. In this course, we won't be using var at all. It's the old school way of defining a variable, and we're using the latest approach to use let and const. So far, our variables have just been integer values, that is, whole numbers. A variable can be a decimal value, like let w equal 4.78. Or it can be a word or a sentence. Enter 
Let my name equals Nick Lever. Use your own name and make sure to enter double quotes at the start and end. This type of variable is called a string and can be very useful. But what happens if we add together my name and X, a string and a number? Because my name is a string, the plus operation doesn't try to convert my name to a number. Instead, it converts X into a string and joins this on the end of my name, giving Nick Lever 12. Now a little challenge. Can you create three variables? First name, last name and full name. When creating full name, use the variables first name and last name and put a space between them. Pause the video now and give it a try. For my name, it will be let first name equal Nick, let last name equal Lever, let full name equal first name plus space plus last name. To check, enter full name to see its value. Don't worry if you didn't get this right. The more practice you get, the more likely you are to become an expert. Notice I used a capital N for name. Throughout the course I'll be using what's called camel case. Camel case is the practice of writing phrases without spaces or punctuation, indicating the separation of words with a single capitalised letter. And in this course the first word will start with a lowercase letter. In the next video we'll look at other things you can do with strings. Quick pause and I'll catch you in a minute. This video comes from my Udemy course, The Beginner's Guide to 3D Web Game Development with 3GS. Get the full course by following the link at nicklever.com forward slash courses.